What's up guys, I'm Brian Sakawa, you're watching He Spoke Style, and today I'm going to walk you through every single detail of what I wore on my wedding day. So I got married last year, my wife Robin has great style, so I wanted everything about what I wore to be meaningful and to be absolutely on point. I put a lot of thought into everything from my tuxedo to my shirt, my bow tie, my shoes, my socks, my cologne. I mean, I basically considered every single detail to the nth degree and then some. However, it was very important to me that everything was perfect on that day and the wedding was something we would look back on and remember and think not only was it an extremely special and emotional occasion for us, but also that we presented the most polished version of our own personal style. So without further ado, let's get into what I wore. I knew that I wanted to wear a tux for the wedding and that I wanted my wedding tuxedo to be super classic, but also something on the special side. I wanted it to be classic so I could wear it to other black tie events in the future, but I wanted some special touches as well because, you know, it was my wedding day. Bottom line is that I wanted it to reflect my personal style, which I always say is classic with a modern sensibility. So of course I turned to my great friends at Michael Andrews Bespoke who have been making clothing for me for many years now to entrust them with making this very special garment for me. Fabric is Dorme Tonic, if you know, you know, Dorme Tonic is the absolute gold standard fabric for tuxedos. I went with a 4x2 double-breasted jacket, full canvas with dramatic 4.5 inch grosgrain peak lapels. Double vent, which was an intentional departure from what would be considered classic or proper, which would be no vent, and lined with a subtle black paisley silk lining. The shoulder is roped and was deliberately given more structure as my tastes have continued to evolve in this area. Plus, when you're talking about formal wear, more structure is generally a good rule to follow anyway. Pockets are jetted with grosgrain trim. Button facing is grosgrain, four on the sleeve. However, I chose to make the breast pocket self-facing as I did not like how it would have competed with the lapels and obstructed the line if it were also in grosgrain. One interesting flourish that I want to point out is the cuff here. Now, Rather than a plain cuff, I chose a gauntlet or turn back cuff, and this choice was as much a nod to one of my earliest sartorial heroes, Sean Connery as James Bond, as it was one other detail that would make this a very special tuxedo. One thing that I think is really interesting about Bond and the gauntlet cuff is that in Dr. No, which is the very first James Bond film, before we even see Bond's face and hear him say those three iconic words, Bond, James Bond we see the perfect gauntlet cuffs on his tuxedo jacket. So just a little bit of personal nostalgia that I was trying to bring to this special day. Now let's talk about the trousers, which again are a mix of classic and contemporary. Plain bottom with a grosgrain stripe, suspender buttons. The waistband has a hook and eye closure, which fastens near my hip bone and extends up two inches. And rather than a plain front, I decided to do a single pleat. The pleat for me was sort of a refined and elegant touch. Okay, next let's move quickly to my shirt. The shirt I wore with my tux, and I say with my tux because I did change into a dinner jacket for the reception, is bespoke from Edward Sexton. I had my friend Dominic, who is the creative director at Edward Sexton, make me a classic Marcella bib front shirt with French cuffs in a pure white cotton. Bow tie, well those who know, know that the best bow ties in the world come from Le Nouveau Papillon in Sydney, Australia. My friend Nicholas, who owns Le Nouveau Papillon, sells pre-cut bows, but he also does bespoke work as well, which was good news for me because many of the pre-cut bows are just a bit too wide for my narrow face. So knowing this was a special occasion, Nicholas cut me a bow in premium grosgrain in his modified butterfly pattern. Underneath the jacket, you'll see the braces I wore were just very classic Brooks Brothers black formal braces. Cummerbund, now I considered going all out with a Charvet Grosgrain Cummerbund, but if you've ever priced a Charvet Grosgrain Cummerbund, it is very expensive. So instead of going completely all out, I chose a slightly more economical option from Turnbull and Asser. I will say though that if you are really looking to do it right, that you should not hesitate to shell out some money for a quality Cummerbund. During my search for the perfect Cummerbund, I held many, many limp Grosgrain Cummerbunds in my hand and there's just something special about one that is made with a quality fabric. It just has a structure and a heft to it that makes it feel like you've really done it right. Pocket square, well, although I couldn't find a Nimi to pull the trigger on a Charvet cummerbund, I did furnish myself with a Charvet silk pocket square. Watch, 
Now, I really believe that there are only a handful of watches that really look right with a tuxedo. It's got to be time only. Bonus points if it doesn't have a second hand, and for me, it should be in yellow or rose gold. Now, I personally do not have a watch like that in my collection, but if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I had the honor of working with Vacheron Constantin all last year, and they were kind enough to provide me with one of the most elegant and special pieces in their entire collection, the Historique Ultrafine 1955. I don't have the watch with me for this video, so we're just going to cut away to some beautiful photos of it from the wedding day. Really not much to say about this watch other than that it is simply one of the most elegant watches I have ever worn, and not to mention quite possibly the perfect watch to wear with a tuxedo. My cufflinks are the gold love knots from Brooks Brothers and the stud set is by Codis Maya. My shoes are the Patent Henri by Belgian Shoes NYC and socks. You know, if you're gonna do black tie the right way, you have to wear the right socks, which means they have to be silk. Mine are from Bashani. On my right hand, I wore a bespoke signet ring with my initials made for me by the exceptional folks at Rebus. Now, fragrance, let's talk about that. The final detail of any outfit was more or less up in the air until the day before the actual wedding. You know, choosing the correct fragrance is dependent on a variety of things, including the season, the time of day, and the weather. And for me, the weather actually played the biggest role in making my final choice. So the forecast was for a very hot and muggy day. Robin actually requested that I wear Black Afghano by Nasomato as it has a special significance for both of us, but I decided that it was going to be much too overwhelming, especially with all the humidity that was forecast for that day. So in the end, I decided that the right choice was Creed's Spice and Wood. It's a pretty dry scent, which I felt would cut through and stand out if it was muggy, but not be overpowering. It's also a very elegant fragrance, which definitely fit the occasion and the dress code. Plus, it's masculine in the most sophisticated way possible. So that was my ceremony look, and I actually did a little bit of a switch for the cocktail hour and reception. Let's take a look at a couple of those details. The biggest change was that I swapped out my tuxedo jacket for this off-white dinner jacket from Edward Sexton. Now, I've known Dominic, the creative director from Edward Sexton, for a number of years now, and when I told him that I wanted to commission a dinner jacket for the wedding, he was flattered and also a little bit surprised. His first question to me was, are you sure that you want to do such a strong shoulder for your wedding? And of course, the answer was yes. As I said, I love more structure when it comes to formal wear. Now, if you couldn't already tell, the inspiration for this dinner jacket came from one place of all the gin joints and all the towns and all the world. Yes, Rick's jacket from Casablanca. And I know I'm not the first to be inspired by this iconic piece of movie menswear, and I will surely not be the last, but I am very proud to have an extremely special version of that jacket cut specifically for me by two of my friends from across the pond. This jacket is deliberately classic, doesn't have a vent, and it has a fuller cut. With the dinner jacket, I also switched up my shirt, which was also made for me by Edward Sexton. It's a bit more modern with a fly front and in an off-white cotton. Now I chose off-white because the dinner jacket is cream colored and pure white was just a little too electric against the cream. But as you can see, the off-white is a very nice complement to that. And finally, I did switch up a few more items. My white braces are by Albert Thurston. I replaced my white Charvet pocket square with an off-white one. Hey, I told you that absolutely no detail was overlooked here. And instead of the patent Belgian shoes NYC loafers, I changed into this black suede pair. And scene. So that is everything that I wore on my wedding day. As I said, I put an extreme amount of care into considering every single piece. And I feel like every decision I made had some purpose and some weight, as well as some very personal aspects to them. It was an absolutely extraordinary day and it could not have been more perfect. I mean, Look how beautiful my wife is. Look at her. So <laughs> thank you for letting me share that with you. It was, it was very important to me. And if it inspires you in any way, that is truly humbling. Um, thumbs up if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button. And until next time, thanks for watching and stay tailored.